this particular video, we will discuss about testing of hypothesis. Before we move into testing of hypothesis, we need to know the background of the hypothesis. So, in many realities, in order to assess about the population, we actually go by the sample. Means any conclusions or inferences we are drawing about the population are all based on the characteristics of sample. So the sampling actually enable the researcher to make any conclusion about the population. So that uh, conclusion, when I talk about conclusion or when I talk about inference, actually we are trying to make out that inference about a particular assumption or statement of assumption, which we call it as hypothesis. So hypothesis comes in that background. If I want to um, infer anything about a population based on certain sample, so I may state some assumption about the population and that assumption or the statement of assumption, I need to test it out. So that statement of assumption, you call it as a hypothesis. So. It is basically an assumption or a statement about a population which may or may not be true. So whether it is true or it is not true, that has to be tested. There are, there are various tests available which we will be seeing in our subsequent videos. Some examples of hypothesis are as follows. One first one is new drug manufactured by a company is more effective than the existing drug. So it's an assumption basically. The company thinks that their new drug is effective than their existing drug. And uh, this may be the second statement, the statement may be by a village health officer who says the proportion of smokers in a particular village is 30% or 0.3. Or a sales manager may say that the average sales of his company is 500 metric ton. Uh, and the marketing manager may be uh, considering that the sales and advertising expenses, whatever sales turnover which is happening and whatever advertising expenses they are incurring, they, these two attributes or I can say attributes or variables, these two are related with each other. So these are some of the examples uh, for hypothetical statements. The last one is proportion of female smokers is less than the male smokers in a town. Right. So here there are two different populations. One is female population, one is male population. Uh, again, here also there are two different populations. One is the new drug and another one is the existing drug. Here it is about a single population proportion of smokers in a village. So it is about talking about a single population. The third example is also about a single population because it is talking about one company. right? So these are some of the examples of hypothetical statement or hypothesis. What are the characteristics you expect from hypothesis? It should be very clear. Whatever your hypothetical statement is, it should be clear and precise. So, uh, and I should be able to do some testing of the hypothesis. I should be able, I mean, the statement of my assumption should be capable of testing. And it should be limited in scope and must be specific. In all the previous examples, the scope as well as uh, uh, the it is very clear and specific. So all this are satisfied even in these examples. So it must state relationship between two variables in case of a relational hypothesis. That example also we have seen here it is sales and everything expenses. These are about relative uh, relational hypothesis. Uh, it must be stated in simplest language. So whatever we have seen, the examples are all in all are. Uh, easily understandable and it is simple in language. It must be amenable to testing within a reasonable period. So when I try to do a test, it should not take too much of a time. So it should be, you should be able to do the testing in a shorter span of time or in a reasonable period of time so that conclusions can be drawn at the end of this. It should explain what it wants to explain. So that these are all the uh, characteristics, some of the characteristics of hypothesis. Then in hypothesis, there are two different types. One is null hypothesis, another one is alternative hypothesis. Basically, null hypothesis is a hypothesis of no significant difference. Means uh, 
it is when I say no significant difference, suppose if I'm having some assumed population value, I'm assuming the population mean is equal to that value. Neither I say it is lesser than, nor I say it is greater than. I assume it, there is no difference between uh, whatever assumed value of population mean and the actual value. So I'm assuming it as equal. Such type of hypothesis, you call it as a null hypothesis. So when I uh, accept that it is fine, you are accepting null hypothesis, but when you reject, you need another one, which you call it as alternative hypothesis. So rejection of a null hypothesis leads to the acceptance of alternative hypothesis. In hypothesis testing, we must state the assumed or hypothesized value of the population parameter before we begin the sampling. So all these hypothetical statements needs to be freezed before we start doing our sampling. Null hypothesis is denoted by H0, alternative hypothesis is denoted by H1. Sometimes it is also denoted by capital H suffix A or capital A, right? So these are the notations uh, generally being used in hypothesis testing. Uh, about size, if it is population, if we use capital N, if it is sample, we use small n. And if it is mean, if it is population mean, you use the Notation mu, this is actually mu. This is we call read it as x bar. Standard deviation, we use this symbol sigma. And uh, sample standard deviation is s. So, variance, of course, it is the square of standard deviation, so it becomes sigma square here, s square here. And if it is proportion, we use the small p. And if it is the sample proportion, uh, we use p cap or p hat. That is what these are the symbols which we notations of symbols which we use uh, in our hypothesis testing. Further, uh, about how do we formulate null and alternative hypothesis, we we'll see in our next video. Till then, take care. See you.